Hi chess friends, this is King's Executor bringing another game to you from the French opening. And this is between Nigel Short and Stefan Kinderman. And the game was played at the Bank Kaufmann Rapid Play in Nuremberg, Germany in 1994. And this was a really sharp game. And we have the French here. After knight c3, Kinderman played bishop b4, the French Winneva variation. And this is one way to force a concession out of White's uh, central pawns, because now the defender of the e pawn is pinned. Another way to uh, force a concession out of White's position is the main variation of the French attacking the pawn twice and after the pawn push is pushed knight back and then c5 um, later on after knight c6 and uh, f6 at some moment black is going to bombard the white central pawns and to get the same uh, white pawn formation which can be attacked later on, bishop b4 is another way. But if you want to play the French as black, knight f6 instead of bishop b4 is a more positional and less concrete way to play and therefore easier because there are less forcing lines for black. Because after bishop b4 you have to know what to do after bishop d3 for example, just uh, protecting the e-pawn and uh, now you don't know what to do uh, in the center. You don't have your f6 and um, your usual um, counter play against the central pawns. Okay, so after bishop b4, e5 was played anyway, the main move. And now c5. A3 to force a positional concession out of black and um, bishop takes c3 is the best move here pawn takes and now the question is um, does it hurt black's position um, that black is lacking the better of the two bishops that um, light squared bishop is blocked in by its own pawns and uh, white has the bishop pair knight e7 to get ready to castle and queen g4 to point at black's weakest point in his position castles which looks very risky because after bishop d3 you see that the two bishops are looking at black's king side in conjunction with the queen and the knight can join the attack soon. If you think that a move like c4 is good, bishop h6 uh, is a good way to play, for example. And after knight g6, you can take that off and. Um, it doesn't really matter uh, with which pawn you recapture, say f takes to open that rook's file. Now you have to retreat that bishop. And now black managed to regain the counterpart of uh, white's bishop pair, which is the better bishop of our white, because that bishop is bad now too it's blocked in by its own central pawns but this isn't the game continuation in this position Kinderman played f5 and of course en passant to keep that diagonal opened against the king rook takes was uh, Kinderman's move and now queen h5 by short this is a big threat and uh, h6 was the move and what white has managed is 
He has a bishop pair and he forced a concession out of black's kingside pawn structure, which lo looks weakened now. H4, an interesting aggressive um, plan by white. Knight c6. You see, the h pawn is pushed in this rapid game because uh, black is lacking development in a way. And white relies on that um, black is too slow to attack the white king. And bishop g5 is one of that uh, sign signs that that might be true. Of course, that bishop cannot be taken because after pawn takes pawn the black king is way too vulnerable and this is a lost position for black so instead bishop uh, uh, after bishop g5 rook f8 and knight f3 getting developed of course the d pawn was attacked twice c4 now trying to force that bishop back but bishop g6 was the move. Of course that knight is pinned so that bishop for the time being is immune. Queen a5 to get out of the pin and of course queen takes c3 with check is a threat winning the rook. So king d2 was short's move. Let's just drop back and let's look at some variations because this is a very complicated position. Bishop ta takes h6 is maybe the best move here and there are um, concrete ideas behind this. If queen takes c3 check then bishop d2 and if queen takes a1 king e2 and of course there's this mating threat so check and if knight takes rook takes with check with the idea to take on d4 with check so queen e uh, king e3 and qu queen takes a3 check white takes on f2 this is just one variation and now black ca could uh, recapture or capture on g6 and if queen takes check and uh, well black would have to get his pieces out but this is a way better position for white because of knight takes e6 and, uh, and queen d6 check simply knight f4 takes takes and well if rook e8 then bishop b4 is very strong and you see white has very active material here and the rook is coming into the game very soon attacking these pawns and of course the knight e7 move threatens the e d5 pawn so after bishop takes h6, queen takes c3 is no good so black could have taken on h6 and this practically forces a draw after queen takes h6 well there are several ideas after knight takes g6 and queen takes check king h8 um, well White can just force a draw with a perpetual check and there is no knight g5 to threaten mate because of queen takes c3 check and um, king f1 is one of the moves I mean if uh, king e2 here then the knight takes on d4 with check so that makes no sense King f1, queen takes 
a1 check, king e2 here, and knight takes check, and queen c3 check forces practically queen d3 here, which loses the queen. So in this position, there is no knight g5, but king f1, and this is still a draw, after queen takes c3, there is no mating uh, idea for white here in this position. Just a perpetual check for white. If rook g1 to try to hang on, there is e5. It's unbelievable that black has time for this, but he does. After check, for example, if you think that you can just uh, play knight e5 with the idea of check, king moves, and check, which forces rook takes f7, well, that doesn't work. That doesn't work because of queen g3. The f-pawn is pinned, white is under pressure here, and there is no way. Um, knight f7 is the best move to stop or to solve this pawn's pin. But then rook takes, now the pawn is pinned again, queen takes, king takes, pawn takes, and after bishop g4, rook d2, and rook e8. Um, black is for choice here, I believe. This rook is dormant, the pawns here are... Um, not that mobile, really. So let's drop back before the possible bishop takes h6, which is basically a draw. What if castles, the last variation we were looking at, then black just can take off that very uh, menacing lie squared bishop, takes, and now there's even rook takes f3, and if pawn takes, we get to take on g5. And if check, check, you see there's just a perpetual for white, nothing else. So this is explains king d2 to um, take away black's ideas of queen c3 check, but this is actually um, not a good move, objectively. You see the pawn here is pinned. And there's only the knight defending e4. And this is why uh, the d4 pawn should be attacked in this position. The way Kinderman does that is to play knight to f5. But a stronger way would have been e5. Then black gets the, uh, the upper hand, and bishop takes h6 is the best move. And if pawn takes, you see that white is under big pressure. King c1 is the best move here, but now black could take on g6, and queen c7 saves black from mate, and Well, the white king is very vulnerable, and um, the white center is destroyed. If knight takes d4, knight takes, pawn takes, rook takes f2. So white just simply um, destroyed his own king safety in this position. But knight f5 is fine too. That knight is taken off. Of course, d4 uh, was under too um, too much pressure. Rook takes, and now the bishop is pinned here. Queen a check, rook back, queen g6, 
6 and now that bishop could have been taken off and after knight takes check check king takes f2 check and you see the king cannot run away and that means black has a perpetual check here and after knight f3 check and you see white would lose the queen if uh, he tried anything other than to stay in the perpetual check so knight f3 wouldn't have been possible here so uh, the bishop could have uh, been taken off on g5 but e5 was kinderman's move and now bishop takes h6 queen c7 again to protect bishop e3 with the idea to push that h pawn better was queen g3 to pin that e pawn and to keep that pressure on g7 then bishop f5 would have been uh, one of the moves for example and then we can just take off that knight uh, that um, pawn and after knight takes bishop f4 and you see white has what he's got in this variation um, the knight is pinned and you can just push down that pawn very soon Instead of queen g3, short played bishop e3, and now bishop f5 looks good. e4 would have been stronger because after knight h, knight g5, sorry, bishop f5 now. Uh, and rook f6 and you see the queen uh, gets kicked out of the game very soon but this looks unnatural because uh, after sorry yeah after e4 here it looks unnatural because that bishop is um, really hemmed in so it's understandable why instead sorry <laughs> sorry sorry after bishop e3 bishop f5 was played rather than e4 queen g3 here by short and rook a8 h5 now to use that pawn as a can opener against the king's position queen f5 again with the threat of takes on d4 so knight takes and now you see that interesting rook takes of course this all be relies on uh, this weak pawn pawn takes and d4 bishop g5 pawn takes with check and queen takes c3 queen d5 check king c1 and queen takes g2 threatening the rook on h1 so king b2 was short's move let's just drop back queen c4 check would have been possible after that rook f7 and if e6 queen takes h1 check and bishop e6 and if queen takes e6 queen f3 attacks two pawns bishop e3 to protect one queen h5 and now there are interesting pos positional uh, moves here check and if king h7 rook 
h1 is a de deflection takes takes and uh, the b7 pawn is attacked so b6 and then check and f3 and now the queen has um, no active uh, diagonal here and that takes time for the queen to get back into the game knight a5 could have been a continuation here to threaten check on c4 but queen d5 would stop that idea and after king h7 to get out of the check the centralization of pieces and uh, threats all over the place but queen h6 and the question is if black could hold this white has an edge here so this is why in this position queen c4 check could have been considered but of course it's very difficult to look that many moves ahead and think that you have a little edge so king b2 is understandable of course taking on uh, c4 opens the light squares for that bishop so king b2 is understandable from the human point of view queen g5 h6 very strong move but g6 here and after check well again queen c4 check was possible but it's the same reason you're opening the light squares against the white queen side here where the king is. Such pawns are really, really uh, risky to take. So h7 check, king h8, and now this pawn is rather a shield for the black king, but white is attacking that dark sword diagonal which black can defend rook a d1 bishop e6 with the idea just to block that passed pawn and the dark sword diagonal so the king is safe rook d6 rook e8 rook e1 queen f5 Queen e3 and well moves like c3 could have been considered and the queen mm, if the queen takes c3 then queen takes f2 here but if king takes c3 then rook c8 is suddenly a winning move for black and if you think you can escape, then think again. Knight d4 is a lovely move that opens the lines against c2. And if you take the knight, check, check. And if you don't want to lose the queen, the white queen, then you end up in check mate. So after c3, check, king c1 would have been the best move and then simply rook e7 and you see um, black is rounding up that pawn and white has to worry about the back rank because of that very strong pawn c3 check hadn't been played rather rook e7 immediately And now f4 by white. Rook h7, rook e2, and now black starts to get the upper hand here. Queen c5. You see, of course, black has more material, but the problem for white is that the white pieces are uncoordinated whatsoever so
c3 check very very strong move that opens the line for the bishop so the king has to go to b1 c1 or a1 king c sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay i misclicked so c3 check again king has to go back king c1 was short smooth and now queen f4 check very very strong king d1 was played and the last move of the game is rook h1 and knight is short resigned to kinderman and the reason is that after rook e1 bishop g4 is checkmate so i hope you like the game i'd like to know your thoughts about it let's just quickly recapulate you see the win of the french here a standard position and well it's the all-time fight against uh, black's king and a very aggressive approach by short and kinderman really played this uh, black side of that fight very nicely which is very difficult very difficult and uh, he just got his pieces out and played actively in the center and found very very nice counterplay and f uh, now you see if you don't have a strong follow-up for your aggressive play as white then black might find very nice counterplay and punish you for not having uh, developed normally and castled you know as you would teach your students and uh, well very risky play by both sides but kinderman defended very nicely and c3 really um, started to um, show that white is losing and this is the last move of the game please share your thoughts i'd like to know them and keep the comments coming thanks